that rail to bit which I use to cut the edges of the, uh, the neck as you can see it's sort of uh, got a rounded profile to it as well as a, a guide on the underside so it follows the uh, the side of the neck as you can see as I mentioned before it has a rounded cutter edge so basically what it does is it cuts uh, a nice sort of uh, rounded side to it so it takes off most of the material um, after this I'd probably use hand tools uh, somebody did say why not use the spoke shave um, generally you don't have much control over a spoke shave and uh, as the name suggests it's used to make uh, spokes on wheels or chair legs or or whatever uh, I generally would suggest not using one of them but to use uh, hand tools like a rasp file which uh, I have read is probably the best tool for the job it may take a little longer but uh, at least you get uh, at least you know what you're getting and you can control it uh, quite easily um, there are general other general ways of doing it you can use it with uh, routers um, or do it with routers and uh, other forms of equipment uh, but generally I find that it's better to use a rasp file um, it gives you more control and you can do uh, what you want to do with it and uh, have more control over it so the results are what you expect Okay, carry on with the uh, neck shaping. Uh, as you saw previously, we uh, started to uh, take most of the material off with uh, a slightly more aggressive uh, uh, router bit, which I've misplaced at the moment, so I can't uh, show you it. <coughs> Either way, we have actually taken off a bit more, and uh, that set us up kind of nicely to... Uh, uh, start taking uh, the rest off by hand uh, as you can see in the shots above the neck uh, we have uh, a rasp file a rasp file sorry uh, you can get them in different grades of uh, how aggressive you or how much more material you want to take off the neck um, this one's not a too heavy one actually I'm probably thinking I'm going to get another one uh, to take off a bit more material uh, the left of uh, the file you can see a barrel sander which goes in uh, either a pellet drill or a hand drill. I've got this out just in case uh, uh, the, the file didn't make too much of an impact on the neck but uh, we're not doing too badly. Um, so if I need to take uh, a little bit more off the neck or just uh, round off some edges and I can just stick that in a uh, pillar drill and start uh, sanding a bit more material away a uh, slightly more closer look at the uh, the curve as it curves back into the body um, as you can see I've drawn some lines on here um, center line here marking the middle of the neck obviously and these uh, two uh, lines going off towards the edges uh, this is how much we want to sort of take out and round off so we'll be sort of filing up to up to this line as you can see I've started on this side uh, with the, uh, the file and we'll hopefully uh, curve it round so it follows this line around uh, we've also done this at the other end uh, hopefully you can just about see that that's a bit bright uh, we'll start uh, coming up along the sides here and just blending it into the middle line 
<coughs> when giving it a final sand uh, to make sure it's uh, nicely curved around. But as you can see we've started uh, filing it around uh, the side here. We've also drawn a line on the side so we can follow this line down as we curve it around. Uh, you can see this in various light conditions on pictures of the original guitar. Um, but these are the sort of guidelines uh, I follow as I start filing around the uh, the ends of the neck. Um, also, you need to watch the neck shape as well. Uh, I'm still trying to find the uh, information <coughs> which I've read uh, where it sort of describes the uh, neck shape and where it sort of changes on the red special. Uh, but I've yet to uh, refine that information which I had. I'll have another quick route through tonight to see if I can find it, but uh, if I find it I will add it on to the end of the video or uh, tag it in the middle as a text uh, add, but at the moment I can't find it. But hopefully uh, there are enough guidelines on the website uh, to do with neck shaping and the different neck, uh, uh, neck descriptions of how to shape it and, uh, and various diagrams there should be enough information there to help you. Okay, we're going to carry on with the uh, neck shaping. Um, I thought I'll show you another way of doing it, which is with a barrel sander. Uh, as you can see, this is the barrel sand sander. This is attached to a pillar drill there. Um, I believe I got this from uh, Screwfix in the UK. Uh, it comes as a kit. You get about three or four different sizes of barrel, and also a spare, uh, quite a few spares of uh, sanding material to put around the, uh, the drum. Um, this is probably going to remove the material a lot quicker, so care is needed. Uh, when you're doing this but uh, I've done this on my last build and it helped quite a lot it removed uh, the material quickly and also I did have a, a plank of uh, wood underneath this with a hole uh, the size of the barrel underneath it but that's gone walkabouts again um, that just enabled me to uh, use the hole of the barrel and not miss the bit off the uh, off the end because I couldn't get anywhere near it but uh, we'll be using this piece of equipment today and uh, I'll show you uh, the results after uh, after a little bit of work on it see it is pretty much roughly shaped all the way along there's a few spots where I need to uh, still go over a little bit more but uh, you can sort of see some lines on it uh, where I need to hand sand it uh, with a block and just uh, nicely round it over 
Uh, still a little bit of sanding to go along the sides and the edges, but overall, it's pretty much uh, pretty much there. Uh, still needs a little bit of rounding for the bolt which holds it on, and also some two holes on the back uh, for the uh, two screws that hold it in place. But as you can see, it is pretty much sanded around and uh, all in profile and in shape. Um, as I say, it will probably require quite a bit of hand sanding and uh, this will be done in between uh, finishing this off and also gluing the truss, wo truss rod in with some uh, Araldite glue. Um, and then after this, uh, a fillet strip will go down the uh, the, uh, the truss rod channel there, that you can see. This will have a built-in uh, bend to it, so it uh, compresses the truss rod into a sort of a, a shallow U bend. Uh, so when you tighten it up, it will uh, counteract any uh, any uh, warping in the neck or any movement. Uh, that'll be sort of done uh, a little bit later on, which uh, I will show you when we get up to it. Uh, this will be uh, fitted to the uh, body to see how it fits and uh, how it feels. Plus, we still need to put the truss rod on top, uh, truss rod the uh, fingerboard on top, which has been made already. But I will talk you through how to uh, go about doing that. 